you know, thinking back to that, we came out and we got the lead at the beginning, and I don't believe we ever. No, you never trailed that. Yeah, game. I don't think we ever trailed, and it was really one that I felt pretty strong that we were going to hang on the whole time. I was really proud of the girls. We we finished. I mean, that was a game that I feel like in the past year and a half that we possibly could have let slip out of our fingers, and we finished, and which is showing some maturity on on the girls' parts, but. No, the next morning I got to school in Boy Springs Valley and Orleans, and everybody was just real happy that, that <laughs> you we didn't, You didn't have to wait until uh, <laughs> when you got to school because I was getting messages as that game was finishing up. They, right. were, they were starting to email. <laughs> yeah, I think um, Crawford had trouble hitting that night, but I do think that our defense had something to do with that. The girls, yeah. we, we really started – trying to hit the defense and, and, you know, making the girls understand that, okay, you score, you know, whatever, 10 points or whatever, but if your girl scores 12, you lost your – you lost the, that individual part of your game. So right. they've really been working a little more on defense, um, working on the help side. So I think, you know, that game, the defense set our tone. They were patient. They looked for each other. And, you know, we didn't have anything to lose. We weren't expected to win that. And they came out – with maturity, um, and I thought they did a, a real – I was really proud of them. Um, so that was the good point. As, <laughs> as much as you want to talk about that one and, and remember it, yeah, I know that you want to forget your next one, the Brownstown game. You went there and, um, you know, just not a not a great game. It's one of those Saturday games that is kind of weird middle of the day, um, you know, and, and you go to Brownstown and they, they're they very well coached and, and respond very well to their coach coach Allman there does does amazing things with the girls that he's got so yeah we had um so we hadn't practiced for two days because of the weather right um so that I was a little bit worried about but then on top of that I don't know what it is but these girls on Saturdays <laughs> are just they make me nervous we um we played Lanesville good I was looking back the other day yeah Lanesville we had on a Saturday played pretty decent there. That was a Saturday night, though. This That's We're, we're true. talking Saturday That's midday. True. That's you know, true. If, if we go back, your Linton game was that way. Right. Um, White River Valley. White River Valley was that way. Northeast Dubois was that way. You know, all of those games right through there that are, you know, those 1030 on Saturday games, your girls just are not. No, they're not morning girls. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> That's um, – and we kind of talked about that when we were headed over, and I was like, girls, you're, you know, we're going to stay awake. We're not going to um, sleep, you know, keep your focus. And I don't know. They, they, and luckily in like the White River Valley game, um, we'd pulled out, you know, we yeah. had a good second half there, but we just couldn't find anything that worked on Brownstown. I tried every combination, different players, different offenses, different defenses. We tried. Full court, half court, we tried everything, and we just couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't get the gears going. Um, so that was really frustrating. And you know, you, I can't blame it on the weather. Everybody else had weather yeah. problems too. Um, I know even a couple girls came in and they shot on their own during that time. So um, some of them still had a ball in their hands. So we just, you know, that was, you know, we had a kind of a heart to heart there afterwards I kind of introduced them to the basketball again and you know this is the thing that you've <laughs> got to protect and if the other team has it we're supposed to stop them just kind of yeah. joking with them but they knew they weren't that wasn't that wasn't our girls that wasn't our West Washington what we had worked for um they're proud and they want to do better than that so you know we talked about it and um I think you know trying to regroup um, then we came last night. We had to go to Borden once again. Another <laughs> game that Borden <laughs> is a is a whole different monster in themselves. Um, you know they've got uh, a group of sophomores that are just as athletic, probably as you as anyone has seen around for a for a whole class. Um, you know, and and the girl can score pretty much at will. The Wheeler girl does pretty much everything that you want a, a big to do. Um, runs the floor well, and then. Um, I forget the one that had 17 last night. Rare, um, rare, no, rare. The oh, the little yeah, 11? Yeah. Little guard. Um, and she's she's able to knock down the outside shot, so it, it's hard to guard. I mean, right. what, do you, what do you do? And that's that's kind of the way yeah. I felt the game last night was. You know, you'd, you'd focus on one, and then the other one would get going. Right. Um, the one thing I was fairly pleased with is um, – Rary had, which we were worried about her too. She had 16. Six of those came from the free throw, so I felt like we almost held her yeah. to five buckets. Which they're just long. They're they are hard to match up with. They're they're long. They've got you know, which we I felt like we didn't match up terrible, but it was where we thought we had someone covered, and then 
you know, like that 11 hit three threes, I think, yeah. and just like just really, we weren't, we knew she could shoot, and we were trying to keep an eye on her, but we didn't know she was going to do that. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. um, no, we. Well, that's why they're number two in the state. I yes, mean, that's <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> there and you know, you look at who they played. They go out and they play good teams. Well, like we were talking on the radio last night that they play a who's who of Indiana basketball in the last week because yes. they play us. Then they. Um, Tomorrow night they have Springs Valley at home, and then the Saturday before sectional starts they go to B and L. Yeah, they're going to Bedford. I <laughs> talked to him about that last night, and I said, "Did you really schedule that?" And uh, well, we were talking. You know, Coach Vic probably wants to see where his girls match right. up. I mean, that if, right. if you can compete with the B and Ls, you're going to be able to compete with the Lanesvilles and the the, right. the you know predominant powers yeah. in one A in Southern Indiana. Yeah, he said he just decided that. He said, you know, we're not expected to go win, and we'll just see where we're at. And they wanted to play against. Chloe Spring and um, you know and if you're so gonna pick one, that's a good one to pick yeah, to play so against. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm gonna try to hit that one <laughs> since it's in my backyard. Yeah, but um, no, that you know, Borden yesterday though, I will say about the girls, which you were there, and I think we counted and we missed 21 layups. Yeah, unreal. I mean, it, you know, it, the girls, we were having decent looks. Um, the one thing I will, I mean, I felt like though. I felt like their heart was there last night. They were, we were trying to do things. When your shots aren't falling, though. Yeah, it, it was it, – nobody could get anything to fall. It seemed like Ryan and I talked – there were only three people who scored in the first half. Right. You know, so it, that's not a, a typical Senator night. Right. <laughs> well, and the one thing, though, that I am proud of the girls, I've got some girls looking to shoot that I've struggled to get them yeah, to Yeah, struggled look. to get them yeah. to shoot. So now they're shooting – and I just need them to get a few of those to fall to get their confidence going because I know they can shoot. They're good shooters. Um, you know, we keep telling them, you know, they, they can. It's just, and, you know, we try and practice to try to make things as game-like as, as possible, but it's a lot different, especially when you go to yeah. board and it's just a different atmosphere. Yeah. And then, you know, we've got, you know, some big games coming up and the girls have to, you know, settle and, and learn to shoot when there's – Lots of commotion going on. Yeah. So. Let, let's talk about some of those games coming up. You've got Paoli tomorrow night, which is your senior night, which has been moved. Right. Um, you know, you've got two seniors that you're going to recognize. But that's a that's a, a conference game. Um, conference has already been sealed up as, as the championships go. But that kind of sets the tone for the next couple of years in our conference. What's what's your game plan for Paoli without giving it away? Right. Well, <laughs> um, I want to go out, and I always want to try to set the tone with defense. I mean, that's – that's what I was born and raised. And, yeah. um, so I'd like to set the tone with defense, um, you know, have them struggle and handle the ball. Um, I want us to work and be patient. Um, I told the girls last night when we when we started that game last night at Borden, we were working the ball and we were making them play defense. Mm -hmm. And we were I mean, there it was like six to five, eight to six. I mean, we were and, right and there. They don't go, Borden doesn't go super deep into their right. bench. You know, I think they only played seven girls last night up until the final four minutes when right. they, you know, emptied yeah. their bench. But, you know, they only played six girls. So. Right. Well, and that's what I told the girls. We have to make them play defense. If we're the ones out there playing defense, that's a lot harder. That wears you out. Yeah. And, um, but I felt like in, you know, the first four minutes or so of that game, we had a doing what we wanted to do. But then we start getting impatient um, and then trying to do things a little bit out of our – you know, game plan. Yeah. Um, but I want, I'd like tomorrow night coming here, you know, set the tone for, for our defense. And I want them to be patient and, and look for good shots and, um, you know, look for each other and share that ball and, and set the tone and have a great senior night for Shelby and Eva. Yeah. Paley comes in off of three wins. Um, they beat Mitchell, Lagodi, and Eastern all to um, finish up their their season except for the final game that they're going to play um, against us tomorrow then we get into sectional you drew south central which is a team that you've played before you played them november 9th you were able to beat them by one 63 62 here on this court which is where sectional is going to be played um, but i know you're probably not happy with the defensive effort you got out of your girls one of theirs um, one of the the south central girls scored 35 and bartozak had 17 so the, right. that was their their right. predominant scorers yeah. there that was actually at south Oh, Central. at South Central. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that was that. That was another one of those uh, bright and early <laughs> Saturdays. <laughs> um, no, and I was that game was a battle. I mean, it was that was after that game. I knew with the work we did this summer, what we worked on all last season, I felt like we were making the turn in the right direction. That was a game that we could have let slip through our fingers very easily, um, but I felt like from what 
you know, the girls had worked on all summer and all last year. That's the game. It was only our third game of the season. Right. But I really felt like at that point um, these girls are starting to make the right turn and get that grit that we needed to have in order to pull that out. That was, you know, like I said, we, we struggled on Saturday. You know, we won by one point. Um you know, it, it was it was about. I mean, it was a wrestling match. Um, <laughs> yeah. We even had um, uh, Meredith Deaton's dad. He got all excited, and he just he pop stitches, and yep. he had bloody shirt. Yep. And, every, and I said, "Holy cow, what are we doing?" You know. <laughs> but um, no, that was that was a good good win. It was you know because they had finished. We showed grit. They worked together, and that was a really good win for us early on. You know, in that sectional draw, you then if you're able to get past South Central, you'll play Borden again. Um, you know, 18 and three, we've, we've talked about Borden. On the other side of that draw, you've got Christian Academy in Lanesville. Lanesville, the number one team in 1A, 22 and one. Their only loss is to Evansville Memorial. Um, you know, they'll play the first game on that Tuesday night, and then the winner of that gets Rock Creek, which you guys are, are familiar with because you um, just played Rock Creek right. a couple of weeks ago. Um, how do you see that draw kind of coming out? What, do you, what are your thoughts? Well, of course, Lanesville's tough in that top bracket. Um, but I do think Rock Creek can can give them a run there. You if you look at Rock Creek lost a lot of games early, mm-hmm. um, so their record I think is very deceiving. Yeah. Because since then, you know, I mean, they went like I don't know, they lost like maybe six games I or so. I think they in a lost row. more than that. I think they lost yeah. eight in a row to start off the right. season. Right. And they've lost eleven. So yeah. since then, um, they're a good team. They're athletic. Oh, yeah. um, you know. So I, you know, I don't know. And they, at, I believe, at the beginning of the year, they lost to Lanesville by thirteen, mm-hmm. I believe. So you know, I think Rock Creek can can battle there. Um, but Lanesville, you know, they're tough. Yeah. I mean, they are oh, yeah. tough. Yeah, I know. You know, a lot of people when you talk about our sectional, um, you know, everybody's talking Lanesville and Borden. That's what they're they're seeing. They're seeing them on separate sides of the bracket, um, even on the. Um, draw show you know Greg Rakestraw said you know Lanesville and Borden on opposite sides of the bracket he's a Lanesville guy so you know you gotta you gotta love that um but there's some chances you know the Senators can sneak through this one and and you know cause some cause some havoc along with the the other teams you know Rock Creek like you mentioned the Senators can can you know play with just about anybody in this sectional right I like you know I really feel like in my heart, like last night, I know it was tough. The score doesn't show. I I don't think the score shows actually how we could handle some situations there. And, you know, you missed 21 layups. I said, girls, we hit 10 of them. I mean, that's 20 points. We're right there. Um, So, you know, I I feel like that, you know, and and I'm – I'm going to study a lot of film between now and Borden. <laughs> um, I mean, we got to take care of Paoli right. first, and then we got to, yeah. you know, we got to hang on, and, and we got to get South Central again. But if we can get to Borden, um, you know, we're going to do we're going to do some work here. And these girls, I mean, they want it. They, you know, so if we can do that, you know, Lanesville, we played them here on early, and we lost by 13. And when it I went was back, close up yeah. until about the the mid part of the fourth quarter, yeah. then they stretched it out a little. Well, bit. Well, we went. If you remember, they came in. I'd went and watched them a couple times. Yeah, and, and the Davis girls. <laughs> yeah, they – well, they hadn't really shot outside well. Yeah. And I thought, well, they're not going to come in here and shoot well. So I was mm. really looking at other stuff. She came in here and hit, what, like six threes? Yeah, six threes between the two of them, I believe. Yeah, so um, after the first quarter, we were down 13 points. Yeah. And we lost by 13 points. So the next three quarters, I said, girls, we played them even. Yeah. You know, I mean um, – and the girls were playing good that day. Um so, you know, like you say, I mean, I think, you know, we we could, you know, we're not expected to win, but yeah. that's why we play the games. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, Coach, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, good luck tomorrow night. We will talk to you after your game tomorrow night with, okay. a, with your seniors. Okay. Make sure you bring them up. We'll talk to them um, after the game's over. But good luck with that, and we will um, probably not see you again until maybe that middle of sectional um, okay. week. So, okay. but. Um, good luck on those next upcoming games, you know, to finish out your season and to start sectional. And hopefully we get to follow you on through sectional into regional. I'd love that. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> so thank you. We're going to step aside, take a commercial break, and we will be back with uh, Senator Boys head coach Jamie Cummings in just a moment. Expertise, resources, commitment. At Sullivan Financial, we offer a team approach to financial planning offering you a broader scope of expertise than you will likely find in any one person. Clients are our main priority, which is why we work to understand your unique circumstances and ultimately 
create a distinctive plan that provides a roadmap for your financial journey. Located in Mitchell, Indiana, they can be reached at 812-849-2670. That's 812-849-2670. Expertise, resources, commitment. At Sullivan Financial, we offer a team approach to financial planning, offering you a broader scope of expertise than you will likely find in any one person. Clients are our main priority, which is why we work to understand your unique circumstances and ultimately create a distinctive plan that provides a roadmap for your financial journey. Located in Mitchell, Indiana, they can be reached at 812-849. Okay, we're back with Senator Boyd's head coach, Jamie Cummings, along with Senator Senior Sen Kenton Chase. Um, you know, it's been a while since we've talked to you. Also, Jamie, about your, your team. Um, you've played quite a bit of basketball over the past couple of weeks. Talk to us about... Um, you know your last few games. We talked last time we talked was your Springs was the day before your Springs Valley game, I believe. Okay. Um, so the Valley game was that three games ago? Yeah. Well, four if you count four. last night. Yeah. Valley was a was a tough one. You know, we we had them on the ropes and just came up short again. Uh, I think Kenton will tell you we're a little disappointed about losing that one. We we were right where we needed to be and did, did a lot of things right. Uh, took away some stuff from them that we knew we wanted to. That you know. Did a great job on the scout, and the guys did what what was necessary. But we, we, just, we just came up short again. Yeah, that's a that's an overtime loss. I I've got you for four overtime losses through the year, and it's just one of those things that you just can't can't kind of get over that overtime hump. You you seem to you, you you play really well through the whole game, and just something goes wrong in that overtime or goes wrong you know late, and and those games kind of sneak away. Some, sometimes it's us. Sometimes we panic a little bit. I think the last few games where it's been tight, we've, we've done a better job of not just, you know, kind of letting it fall on us. Uh, we executed and just didn't make a basket. Or, yeah. or uh, you know, last night, kid that hadn't taken a three the whole game steps out and hits a three on <laughs> us. Um, you know, we knew he could shoot. We we said, you know, he'll he'll make one if you if you play off of him, but. You know, we don't want to just let him sit out there and shoot because yeah. he will, but he hadn't. And then in overtime, he decides to shoot one. Of course, it, it splashed right in the middle. Right. Of it. So that's part of the game. Uh, yep. Guys make plays. Um, we got to make those plays for us. We need someone to step up. We we got guys that, you know, do their job, and then we just got to find another contributor. And I think part of what happens late games is we get tired. Yeah. You know, our bench is short. Um, we're trying to develop some guys that we, we can throw out there and get them some minutes, but it's, it's just really, really tough with our numbers where they're at. It's, it's hard to play freshmen at the varsity level. We've already got a couple doing that. We're looking to move some other guys up. We're looking at Nash. We're starting to give him a few minutes, but just barely. Um, so I, I think our energy level, a lot of times we've came from behind and forced an overtime situation. Yeah. So when you spend all that energy and then uh, you hit that wall, at some point, eventually. Yeah. So yeah. I, I know that's part of it. It is, but uh, that's no excuse. We got, we got, <laughs> we got to get through it. Kenton, talk to me about that. Um, you know, Springs Valley game. You got family on that team. What's that? What's that like? Uh, you know, it's also it's always awesome playing against you know family and um, you know that being the last game I'll ever play against you know Connor. Um, it hurts to lose, but I mean. It wasn't a good one to end on, but, it, you know, it was a good one to end <laughs> yeah. on, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, so after that Springs Valley game, you play a double dip. You come back that next night and play South Central here. Um, you know, through that first half, you, you played ev – everyone played really well, but you could just – it just seemed like that second half you lost your legs. Everybody just – you know, that, that momentum just kind of stopped at halftime. Um, you know, and you, you end up dropping that one. But then you come back and, and you go to Medora and play a, a heck of a game there. Um, and it seems like all things are just firing on all cylinders there. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know if Kent was going to answer <laughs> this or not. Um, 
The Medora game was good for us. Uh, I, I was nervous going into that, to be honest. They, they, uh, they move the ball well. They cut hard. They play hard. They're, they're better than, uh, than what they've been in the past. Yeah. I think Mark, Coach Morin does a good job over there, and he's he's had some kids just really step up this year, and they're, they're playing at a different pace. And I knew if we, you know, let they our were guard they were down. very patient with the ball. The first time down the floor, they they move the ball in their offense for a minute and 40 seconds. I remember counting that one off, and it was like that, th that's the most I've ever seen a Medora team, you know, be able to run their offense. That's that's the nervousness. That, that I had, um, the fear that I had was, okay, we <laughs> we don't have much room for error if they're going to do that. Yeah. You know, if it's 20 to 19 game, you, yeah, you got to be there's darn not, perfect. Yeah. So, so we wanted to pressure them and, and get up in them, and eventually our pressure did kind of break them down. Right. And once, once we got going, the floodgate kind of opened up for us. Um, you know, then you had Mitchell last night, which was a, uh, you know, you, you came out pretty hot, had a lead through the first quarter. Um, that one then again goes to overtime, and you're you're not able to get the victory there. But Mitchell's always kind of been a hard place for the Senators to go and play. Kenton, talk to me a little bit about that. What's it like playing in the in the uh, Blue Jacket nest over there? Uh, it's definitely uh, different. The court I noticed was, it was really bright. Yeah, um, one of the brighter courts we play on. Um, going over there, they were a lot taller than I feel like most of the teams we play. You know, they got height in their guards they got height in obviously their bigs i mean all around it was driving in we had to you know try not to get blocked you yeah. know, and stuff like that adjust our shots a little bit go into the guys a little bit more you know so. um you know i was pretty impressed with the Mosier kid i believe he's number two number three number two i think it was two um yeah. you know and he could he could he was kind of their go-to when they were looking to get something going. They'd go to him, and he would either get in the lane or dish it off to somebody. What do you do defensively to to stop that? I mean, that's usually that's usually your kind of bread and butter, you know, stopping the other team's best guard. Yeah. So we played. We mixed it up a lot. We played a lot of man and then a lot of zone. Mm -hmm. And I think where he really hurt us was we went into our zone and he they would they would screen the top guy and then we'd have to help up and then he would dish down to the right. bottom guy and a lot of that is we got to help over and i think towards the end we tried to adjust to that and then you know they'd kick out and stuff but i think man to man wise i mean i think he really mainly got his points and did his contributing through like our zone right so right you know, and that's something, Jamie, that you've you've gone to this year a little bit more than we've seen the, in the past is a is a zone defense, and it's it's really worked out well for you, you know, at times, and then at other times there's a, a guard who's able to slash and, and dish and things, you know, kind of what what he did last night in that um, overtime, you know. Uh, there's not really an adjustment out of your zone that you can make to really stop that. I mean, Kenton, Kenton hit the nail on the head. You've got to help over and, and help up and things. But that, that you, we don't see that a whole lot. We have th that's really the first time that I've seen somebody be able to break down that zone. I, I've known Austin for a long time. Uh, <laughs> I, I work with Austin. Yeah. Um, do some training um, in the summer, and he's came for several years, so I know him really well. Um, I, I think he did a great job, and and we didn't adjust. He got us. He he's very slippery. He's very yeah. creative. He's very crafty. There's really not a good. I mean, I, it's all complimentary. Um, he's unique. He uh, he's a he's a skinny kid that's six two or whatever he is. He understands where to put the ball. He will split us and then take it below our knees, and you know he would go over us yeah. with the ball. So he didn't need much room. And the way the game's called now, you can bounce your way through, take your euro one or two steps, tuck it. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do. And um, I know my son works with him. Right now, he's working with him at least once a week. So, <laughs> thanks a lot, Morgan. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Austin's a nice player, and and he he has attacked us better than anyone I think all season, especially in our zone. We have a hard time um, as a team. We have some guys that can guard one on one and contain their man, and then we have some others that really struggle with it. So, we try and hide them a little bit in a zone yeah. and mix it up, dance in and out. Um, I prefer to play man. I'd love to press 84 It's just feet super every hard to do. It, it's hard With to do in this year, in this time of basketball. You know, you've oh. got, and you've got a Kenton Chase who, if you try to press, I mean, he breaks down the press by himself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's guys like Kenton. Kenton is special and unique, and we, we use him in a lot of ways. Um, he can get to the rim and he can finish, and 
We're really trying to get him to go up off two and be strong. I don't yeah. think he realizes how, how strong he is and how hard that is to guard. And he just said it a while ago, you know, their length bothered us and get to the rim and change shots. I want us to go through that right. and draw fouls or get it blocked, and that's okay. Um, but don't change him. You know, we go strong, we stay square. And if you have to change it, it's probably a bad shot. So, so we're trying to adjust to that, and uh, and Kenton's doing a great job for us. He's he's a great leader on and off the court. Does does things the right way. Um, really appreciate that and the leadership he's given the younger guys. We got plenty of them around. <laughs> You've got two upcoming games. Um, you know, a little bit of time in between them. You've got North Harrison. Um, coming up Friday at North Harrison, which is always a, a – if you thought that – if you thought Mitchell's court was bright, North Harrison's is the opposite. They've got blue. the blue on the court. Yeah. So, um, you know, they are 1-12 this year, so they're still looking for, for some wins, looking to get that going. Um, their one win do, did come against Salem. It was their last game, so they're on a winning streak at the moment. Um, you know, what's your what's your game plan for them without giving it away? How are you, how you going to attack them? Uh, oh, go for sorry. it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, – Coaches have really, you know, put it in our heads that they are 1-12, and like you said, but we can't overlook them because they have played a lot tougher teams than their record shows. Right. And um, so we're going in and we're going to play it like every other game. We're going to go in and, you know, play hard. And coming off a hard, uh, tough loss against Mitchell, you know, we want to come in and get a good win that we know we can get. And we got to go in and we got to work hard for that win. I just just to you know echo that they're, they've only won one game um, we've only won five <laughs> I don't and we've only beat three teams of the five yeah um, so we we can't overlook anyone we know that and uh, their record is deceiving I think ours is yeah I, I would we, agree with you we could easily be four0 in the PLAC mm -hmm. and we're only four um, we've lost four games you know I, I don't know the numbers around 13 points I think. I'm close. I've, I'm I've close. got you. I've got so here's the numbers I'm going to throw at you. You've, you okay. you've got four overtime losses. One was a double overtime. Yeah, one was <laughs> a double overtime loss. You've got a loss to Paoli by three. You've got a loss to Northeast Dubois by three. I so right there. I thought that one was four. Mm, yep, four. four. My bad. So no, that one's four. <laughs> so overall, you've got four overtime losses and then two other losses by a total of seven points. Yeah. So, I mean, that's six losses of your nine right there. So, very easily, those could be flipped the other way. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah if it's close, coach is supposed to figure out a way to win. <laughs> so, we're, we're trying. Trust me, we're really trying. Uh, I think a lot of it's our confidence um, between our ears and, and, again, the fatigue factor. When things get tough and I'm tired, of course, the military figured this out a long time ago. Uh, it, it's a lot harder to focus and, oh, yeah. and do things the correct way when you get tired. So we got to get in better shape. Uh, we got to get a little tougher mentally and uh, just win one and then gain some confidence and, and it's repeatable. Well, and this is a point in your season where you can go on on kind of a win streak and get going here, um, you know, and really turn your turn your season. You know, not that you want to turn it around, but get get it get rolling in the way that you you want it. Because after that North Harrison game, you go up until February first, which is the Thursday of girls sectional, um, and you play Crawford County here at T Kermit Tower Gymnasium, um, and they are three and thirteen on the year. That Crawford game is always a, a weird one. I talked with Kristen about weird games. They play Saturday morning games yeah. for the boys to have a matchup on a Thursday. Um, you know, that's weird for them. So. You know, I know that one's a, a game away because you've got North Harrison before you play them. But what do you do to, to get in your boy's head that, hey, you know, just because it's on a Thursday, we don't change anything? Well, I mean, and we don't. The next game is always the most important game on the, on the schedule. I, I say the same thing about my meals. The next meal is the most important <laughs> There <one>. you go. <laughs> um, but uh, we, we just have to focus. We have to get ready. We have uh, we got our scouting report, and, you know, we're going to preach it for two nights, tonight and tomorrow. And then uh, we'll try and execute the game plan on, on Friday for this one. And then we'll get ready for Crawford and do the same thing. Yes, it's a Thursday night. But, you know, as a player, I'm excited to get a play. I'd play every night. And I, I think we got guys like that that want to play. They don't want to be in practice with me. They'd rather be <laughs> playing a game, I'm sure. Is that so. true, Kenton? Do you not, do you not like well, practice? That's not true. I enjoy practice. I just I would <laughs> rather play a game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> just different. There's very yeah. few few high schoolers that are going to say, "Oh yeah, I like practice. I like being part of practice." 
um, you know, just just like you, you know, said, you know, you'd much rather be in a game. Game is competitive, and that's, you know, something that I'm sure Coach Cummings does in practice. He makes it competitive. He makes it, you know, you're competing against the other guys at practice. Yeah, we uh, halfway through, I don't know if it was halfway through or here a few weeks ago, we started, like, we would keep score every time we have, like, a game-like situation. We keep score between us and the JV, and obviously the varsity wins more often like we should, and that just, like, if we look up at the scoreboard and, you know, it's close, it motivates us a little bit, I think, to, you know, push a little harder, you know. You know, Coach Cummings talked about you've got a couple of freshmen who are getting some, some, not some, a lot of minutes. Colton Brown, one of those. Holden Russell, one of those. Holden has kind of stepped into the backcourt with you as a running mate. Um, you know, what's that like? That What's that transition like going from, you know, people who you've, you've had for three years with Lane um, Hofler, who graduated last year, transferring over to Holden and Colt? So I think that um, I, I've played some AAU ball, and so I've played with, you know, various amount of teammates, you know, different types of teams. And so I've gotten used to the Lane Hofler team we had and, like, the Coach Sullivan, that whole team. But then I've also had, like, a team with, like, Caden Temple and a, a team full of guards. And so I personally enjoy being able to – say hold and bring the ball up and coach <laughs> I'm sure likes having two guys that can bring the ball up and if I'm getting pressured and I got a good defender on me it'd be like holding you got it or you know vice versa it's really nice to have that and I think Holden adds a very valuable aspect of getting to the basket and playmaking to our team as well you know alongside the playmaking that I make having two really good playmakers is really well great it's, to it's something interesting for you because you've played with the group of seniors and and it's very it, it you know the seniors have been together their their whole yeah. life. I mean, since you came back from California, mm -hmm. they they've played basketball together. Um, you know, and then to have have a have a hold and step into that. You know, you're used to playing with Ian. You know where Ian's mm -hmm. going to be. You're used to playing with Titan. You're used to playing with Jackson. It it you know has to be a little. You've got to have a little bit of a learning curve, learning where those other got where you know Holton and Colton and and even you know Hayden Morrow coming on. You know you you've got to learn where they're going to be, where the other ones you kind of already know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're all like like you said, we're all learning. I think you know we're still learning a little bit about Holton. You know Colton has certain things that he does better, and you know he can shoot really well. We got to <laughs> be able to get him good shots and. You know, sometimes he, he'll slide one way and we won't notice it and, you know, stuff like that. Along with, like you said, Hayden, he's got his strengths that we have to, you know, take advantage of. And then with Nash stepping in, he, he adds a valuable asset that if he gets to the point where he can, you know, he's strong enough and to play at the varsity level, he can add a really big positive aspect to our team. Yeah. You know, I've, I've noticed over the past couple of games, Coach, you've gone a little bit more to Titan Williams in the post, and he's done a really good job with his post moves down there, being able to score. I think last night down the floor there were three times in a row that you went to Titan in the post, and he was able to get you three big buckets. I, I think that's recognition. Most of that's, you know, on the court. Some of that's Titan. Titan moves some nights better than others, um, and we all do, but Titan's got sore knees and Titan's Titan. He's, he's fun-loving Titan. Um, but when he's active off the ball, uh, we can get him the ball in, in good situations and he can score. I'm, I'm challenging him to shoot more. Like, like literally, he'll, he'll get the ball within two and three feet, and uh, he's looking to distribute to somebody else because he's not used to, I don't know, I don't know why. <laughs> like, you're that close, you're that big, and just put it up. Use yeah. the backboard, square up, and shoot it. Um, we, were, we were just working on that a little bit tonight and some drills. Of him finishing around the rim, I, th I think it's an asset that we got to use more, and that's going to open up more shots. It's going to open up more driving lanes. It's going to allow our team to be better. Um, that's my thoughts. So I, I want to use Titan more, but uh, we need to find him more, and he, he needs to continue to work off the ball. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to give both of you the, the open mic here. Anybody you want to give a shout-out to? Um... Like, I know, like I, my mom? Yeah, like your mom or oh. like your grandma. I know your grandma's probably listening up, yeah. up the road. If you don't give her a shout-out, she's going to be mad. <laughs> shout-out Mama Sharon <laughs> uh, with that loud whistle and those calls that she thinks she's right on <laughs> in the stands, but she has no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom, too. Yeah. Much gotta, love. Got to always get mom yes, in there. Yes, got to get mom. She so may know more than you think. <laughs> that's true. She might. <laughs> and, and she always has your back. That's Mama true. always has your back on every call that's ever, ever given. She's sure. always got your back on that one. Yep. 
So with that, we're going to wrap up. Coach, um, you know, good luck over your next couple of games, North Harrison and Crawford. Crawford, like I said, is here in T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium, so we'll have that one, um, you know, during girls' sectional week. So that will be a, a busy week, but, um, you know, looking forward to calling that game. But thank you for your time stepping in. Again, Kenton, thank you for uh, coming on. Um, you know, good luck the rest of your senior year, and I'm yeah. sure we'll talk to you more. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank yep. you, guys.